We have to keep our women and children safe. Please, let's change the world, hey? Thank you. What drew people to St Mary's was this sense of social justice being an act of faith. But the question was, what could we do as a community? The mechanism for doing anything became creating a not-for-profit organisation and for that not-for-profit to stand on its own, which we called Project MICA and then changed to MICA Projects a couple of years later. It's not the sort of thing that I'm used to doing. I'm having dinner at Common Ground. 20 years ago, there was about 25 people who slept on the grounds around the church every night. So we provided beds and shelter and that, but we felt we wanted to do much better than that. We felt that we could do much better than that. And that's why Common Ground's here today. The Common Ground Queensland and MICA projects have a shared vision and commitment to working together to end homelessness in Brisbane. And since 2012, we've worked in partnership to deliver Brisbane's first supportive housing project, Brisbane Common Ground, and it's been an amazing success. Since 2006, we've worked with MICA not just on evolving a plan for supportive housing, but on the whole range of things that will be required for our communities to end homelessness. Mike has been a leader in implementing our Street to Home program, uh, uh, 50 Lives, 50 Homes, and other initiatives based on work that we piloted in the United States. It's been a very rich and mutually beneficial partnership. This year has shown us how much we are embedded in community and St Mary's community, the local West End community and the Brisbane wider community have now become more part of our engagement on a day-to-day -day basis as people work right across the region. We got this referral yeah. uh, for a male, a rough sleeping in the park here, but he's possibly got uh, his partner and a young baby. A really. young baby in the park Possibly, too. we don't know. So we're looking for, for an individual. Yeah potentially could be with a partner and a, and, a, and a baby. Yes. Look, we've been operating for the last 80 to 20 years. It is impossible for me to tell you the number and the volume of people and populations that we've supported over, this, uh, over the two decades. What our mission is, and we are very clear, is that we are seeking outcomes. And by saying seeking outcomes, working with people who are homeless, we exist to end their homeless, not manage it, not address, or not keep them in transition but to end their homeless, they're very clear. And that then starts defining our outcomes. I think someone might have observed a female and baby as well, but they might have not been sure if they're actually sleeping here. So they've asked us to come out and have a look and see if we're able to uh, engage with them and offer any form of um, housing assistance. I just thought about the fact of that I've got an 11-year-old son and that he's very lucky that he's got a good family, you know, I've got a job, we've got a house and I realise there's other kids that don't have that. So I thought, well, who's helping them? You know, the at-risk children or homeless children. So I contacted a few charities that I like the look of and emailed them and Micah got back to me and said, yeah, they'd love to do it. And they let me know what would be good in the backpacks and then we got started on Facebook. Oh, the kids are going to love these. Great. Evidence-based practice is really important in an organisation like MICA because resources are limited, problems are large and it's very important that we apply our resources in a way that is going to realise the benefits for the people. 
A recent example of um, evidence-based service design and practice was um, our approach with young mothers. We wanted to introduce an element to our support of families that included the children in those families. So we researched overseas to see how other jurisdictions were approaching this problem, identified a two-generation approach that had been tested and researched um, in the state where you'd simultaneously work with the parents and the children um, and support the parents in their, in their parenting. And he just kicks around. I go in there and he's like up on all fours looking around. Yeah. Like, go back on your back. <laughs> if you make a decision to begin parenting at a, a young age, there's still a lot of obstacles for you to overcome. I think the stigma that existed in the 60s and 70s, unfortunately, is still alive and thriving today. Um, so young women still face a lot of discrimination. Uh, so we here at Young Mothers for Young Women, we celebrate the decision they make to parent early. And what we try and do is, I suppose, put in meaningful supports that can assist them to be the best parents that they all want to be. When you have children at a young age, you can end up quite socially isolated. We hear that a lot. So we try and provide an opportunity for young women to keep, come together and meet each other and form a new peer group um, of people that are, are sharing that journey of early parenting. Pregnant when I was 17, came here um, and found a really supportive environment, lots of friendly faces, made great new friends. And then um, after that, Kate offered me a position as a peer worker. And of course I said yes, because it's such a great organisation. Well, what drives me is the change that I see in people's lives and that they're validated, whether it's by advocacy or whether it's by direct service de delivery, like getting a home or getting to go to the Royal Commission. It validates the lives that people have lived and I think that's an enormous privilege to be able to witness that and be part of creating it. Also, we've just met some wonderful people who have partnered with us and the community has supported us. Thank you. Bye. If I was asked to introduce micro projects at an event or a function, I would uh, feel very comfortable in saying that uh, micro projects was at the leading edge of uh, international work on addressing social exclusion. People uh, with a disability, people with a mental illness, uh, people who've been traumatised through institutionalised care, women escaping domestic violence and trying to find uh, a safe place for them and their children, whether it's Christmas hampers at the end of the year, um, whether it's their magic moonlight dance in the middle of the year, which is just a tremendous uplifting experience. MICA is, um, is an exemplary organisation. Micah Projects and MARTA have forged a really successful partnership over the course of approximately 10 years now, currently under the banner of Inclusive Health, which is very much about responding to the needs, the health needs of people who are vulnerable. We have forged that really successful partnership through a shared understanding and vision about the services we provide, how we provide those services, and why we provide those services. And I think that is really at the heart of the success of the partnership. Twenty years ago, we started the Ex-Residence Network Support Group, which was a group of people who were passionate about the issues of abuse and neglect in institutions and wanted to do something about it. So 20 years later, we wanted to give each member an acknowledgement for the work that they've done and some people it's been over that 20 years. Wonderful working with you. Thanks. Working with the Americans, with the Community Solutions and Roseanne Haggerty and Nan Roman, they've all been great opportunities that we've had because we can prevent our problem from becoming big by learning from what they've done. So Registry Week and the 500 Lives campaign, 
All those things have given us inspiration. We need to partner with the world thinkers. These are global issues that are creating homelessness. People who supported the insight of learning from overseas, partnering with people in America who have a much bigger problem than we do. Like these issues are global problems, homelessness, institutional abuse, clergy sexual abuse. They're all, they're not in isolation. So if we don't work in isolation, ourselves, I think we can then break the isolation for the people who live it at a very personal and a daily grind. And that's been a privilege that we've all had to be inspired by others who are ahead of the game. Australia is so lucky, yet we're neglecting to see that we're going to have these problems at a much bigger scale if we don't stop it. The number one killer of women up to the age of 44 is being murdered at the hands of the man who once said, I love you. Who would ever have thought that, that what love would turn into here in Australia, but that's exactly what has happened. The women that are killed to domestic homicide, their deaths are normally the most horrific deaths. They're beautiful women. They're like my daughter, somebody else's sister, their mother. My beautiful daughter, um, some of the people here actually knew her before she died and it's because she was very active in the community to help people. And she wanted to help women who were subjected to violence and she wanted to help women who were homeless. And so how ironic was it that of, out of all the people to get murdered by domestic homicide, it was my daughter, Bianca. Um, none of us are immune. Over and over, you know, the research has talked about domestic violence being the leading cause of homelessness among families um, and with women and children. So we started to really look at that and really look at what we could do. What we started asking women was, what do you need to get safe? And they started telling us that they needed somewhere safe to live. They needed to know that they could either, one, have the man that's using violence removed from their home, um, put in security measures to make sure that the home was safe. Sometimes it's not about doing you know, lots of counselling and support. Sometimes it's about really being really practical, really pragmatic. What do you need right now to get to safety? Welcome to Hamper Day 2016 for MICA Projects. <laughs> Today we're going to prepare, pack and deliver over 300 Christmas hampers to the families that are supported by MICA Projects. We've got six goals that we really want to keep working on. We want to see homelessness as a public health issue and end it. We want to make sure children and families are included in, in this response, that it's not just about individuals. We don't want children living on the streets and we want to prevent and break the cycle of intergenerational homelessness. We want to make sure that people do get justice after they've made this enormous commitment to telling of their stories and histories and experiences of sexual abuse and the lack of accountability. We want to make sure that we bring employment and meaningful activity into the mix, that once people are housed, you end their homelessness, but you don't end their poverty and you don't create community just with the house. You've got to keep doing the work of creating community. So these things are not over and we want to do it for more people. We want to make sure that wherever we can, we can go to scale. And we want to make sure that we're part of the solution to domestic violence and gender inequality. That what we do makes a difference in the lives of women, not just that they're safe, but that they actually feel like equal citizens. We're proud of where we are in 20 years. We never would have thought we'd be here. It's been a ride that's been up and down. And I know that that connection with community is something that we all value and are inspired by because it motivates us to keep working to make um, our community more socially just. We have learnt so much from you and we thank you for what you've given us in who we are as an organisation. 
And I think that we're all very passionate about the impact of our work. We don't want to do the work we're doing to fail at it or to make people's lives miserable. We want to make sure that the impact is making a difference, that people are housed, that they can access healthcare, that they can be respected as citizens, not just as service users. And I think that I value that working in an organisation where no matter who's here, people really have an interest and ability to grow and learn to do things differently because we certainly do things differently today than we did 20 years ago.